Hey up YouTube, welcome to uh, sunny Wales. No, kidding. It's pissing rain again. Uh, and it is the end of August. Now I am just pulling together bits and pieces uh, for my bike off on uh, this weekend away this week. And one thing I've noticed, uh, actually trekking around on the bike as I do, uh, this windscreen that I put on recently uh, was is very nice and shapely um, to some people. I know some people actually uh, don't like it all that much, or my cover. <coughs> However, there's no accounting for taste. Um, one thing I've noticed with this, when it's when it's miserable like this, and it starts raining, and you actually get a lot of rain gathered on the screen, uh, it's actually really difficult to see through. Now, to compound that, uh, I don't know if you can kind of see through that screen, but if you see through uh, both, and this is sitting in the way, uh, which it can do when it's sitting at eye level, my eye level is kind of just above here, then you've actually got double the, the dark screen to get through. So, I wrote to uh, these Puig guys in Spain and asked them for a clear version of this, which they don't do. So the question is, what do you do? So I've managed to get uh, the clean, clear screen. The problem with this one is obviously, as you can see, it's probably a lot better for shitty days like this. Um, it hasn't been drilled, right? So I'm gonna have to take this uh, smoke screen off I'm going to have to lay these one over the other, and then I'm going to have to mark some holes uh, in this one uh, to get this clip-on piece on. Uh, so then obviously the problem is that you need a, a clear piece here too. So I've got to get these, so if you can see that, I've got to get these four screws off uh, and get this off here, and then I've got to get this visory bit out. The very first bit that I bought for uh, the original screen, which is this one, uh, and you can kind of see the difference in uh, height here. This screen, uh, the rail, is at its its highest extension, so it's as high as it will go. Um, so you can see the kind of the difference in shape and, and size and length here. Now I could quite easily just stick this one back on and kind of live with this, but it doesn't give as good protection as this one does uh, at kind of 70 miles an hour and upwards. Um, being able to ride with your visor up at 70 miles an hour, whilst not advisable, um, is is quite nice. Um, particularly if you get the uh, internal shade down on um, your helmet, just to give you a bit of protection. So what I am going to do is, uh, the shape of these are uh, pretty much identical. I can actually flip this one around. So what I'm gonna do is uh, overlay the clean screen on here, drill the four holes out, I'm then going to take this uh, piece off here and I'm going to put it onto um, uh, these retaining clips and then I'm going to bolt it all together and put the clear screen on. And then hopefully, because I'm actually expecting to be riding at night in the rain this weekend, um, hopefully I won't die, which would be very helpful. So um, I'm going to knock this off here now and then we'll come back and hopefully uh, you can see me getting some of this done and you'll see me put it all back together on the bike and we should be good to go. Oh, and now before I go, um, meet the nearest member of our family. I bought this 125cc quad for uh, Battle Kid and I. He is two and a half years of age. I've got to keep reminding myself of that. Uh, but he has got his own little lid and his own little race suit now. And he absolutely loves this. He will come in here and say, Dada, not your bike, Dada. That's yours, that's Ada's. His name is Alexander. He can't even say Alexander yet. And yet uh, this apparently is his bike, um, which that he has to ferry him around on. Uh, I'd highly recommend it as well for under 500 quid. Anyway, there we go. I'm gonna go and sort this screen out and I'll see you in a mo. Okay then, so here we have uh, original screen, the newly intended screen. Um, and the smoke screen, I've just taken off the bike. So tools you're gonna need for this, you need a T30 Torx uh, to get these main bolts out. 
they really annoy me these talks uh, we need a I think that's a 532 Allen key and a 7 mil drill bit according to uh, the original instructions uh, for one of these uh, this touring screen the smoke one comes pre-drilled from uh, Puig this one doesn't so uh, to cobble all of these things together we're going to need to uh, get this one on here uh, get it marked off get it drilled out we're going to need a bit of wood to drill into don't think Battlebomb would be too happy if I drill into the table so uh, first off I'm going to get that visor off and then I'm going to test my uh, drill bit against the holes, the pre-drill hold in the screen. Uh, you're also going to need a sharpie or some other kind of uh, marker so you can mark the holes out. Then we're going to need to flatten this uh, somehow, uh, get it drilled and hopefully we'll be good to go. So, okay, so um, two more things you might need along with your T30 Torx uh, is some sort of grips because to get these out uh, which belong in here. Um, you need to be able to grab hold of the back of uh, this as you're getting rid. So uh, so that's also helpful. Might also be good if you had some baby wipe type things to go with your Sharpie. So I've just tested on uh, a part of this screen. So I know when I mark it out, uh, if I get it wrong, uh, you can wipe it off quite quickly and it will work. So, uh, so that's quite good. I've now just overlaid the smoke screen, smoke screen, I like it, on top of the clear screen. Uh, really the most important part of this, I think, is lining up uh, the mounting holes. So they are pretty much lined up as good as they can be. These then, uh, the top here, actually they pretty much sit together. There's a slightly different shape on the clear uh, versus, the, versus the smoke. Uh, but that doesn't really matter. What does matter is that you get these screens pretty much touching. And then we're going to mark out the uh, the hole. And really what I want to do is get all the way around the edge of that without touching, without moving the screen on top or the screen on the bottom. And now I know if I aim right for the very center of the hole that has been marked out. I'll make a hole in the center where it's been marked out. Then we should be good to go. Now what I also did was measured the hole in the smoke screen with my 6 mil because uh, I didn't have a 7 mil drill bit other than for concrete and I uh, thought that may be a bit wide but actually as it turns out let me lift this off here carefully making sure they are still lined up so those markings should be good. So that is essentially where I want to drill in those four and they look pretty even on each side so that's looking good. So let's give you a look at what I'm talking about. Six mil drill bit uh, which fits in here just nicely. It's got a little bit of play now the challenge with that is I don't want to have to move that around to kind of cut the hole bigger because it will just uh, probably make it too big and a bit too loose. This drill bit with the kind of head on it, that's what measures 7 mil, uh, not the main body, uh, which is slightly smaller to allow kind of brick dust to get out. But if you can see that, that is pretty much perfect. So I need to get the center of this into the center of that. Uh, so I'm going to try and mark it out maybe. Then I should be good to go. Um, so time to get a bit of wood. Time to mark out the center of those holes and get drilling. Okay, so um, I thought I might bring you along for this bit. I wasn't going to record myself drilling. But I can be a bit of an idiot when it comes to DIY. Uh, I think I got that from my dad. Uh, my mum used to joke that uh, he would do one job and screw up seven. So um, quite possibly gonna make a mess of this. So I thought I might as well save it and give you a laugh if nothing else. I have decided to go with uh, our slightly sharper six mil friend here. On the base I need to get through this plastic. When I've got the initial hole done, 
I'm going to have a go with uh, this slightly blunter uh, but wider 7mm piece just to widen out that hole a little bit and hopefully courtesy of Amazon they're going to save me uh, getting a divorce um, and hope I don't cut into this table so I've marked out the center of these holes I'm not sure whether you can see those or not I'm making sure the drill is turning in the right direction now let's see if I can hopefully get this drilled they are pretty good happy with those you can see the kind of black outline I was aiming for slight bit there slight bit there ultimately will that matter time will tell so uh, pretty much spot on pretty much spot on battle dad saves the day okay now to pull some other stuff apart and start putting it back together let's take one of these stick it back in here and get a start on the thread I should hopefully be able to finish it looks like we can work with that let's just take our bits and pieces hi dogs this battle kids bike by the way now let us see uh, if we put this back together so now let us see one of these stayed in which means I have got to get this screw and this washer uh, through here Oh, hang on. The washer goes on the rear side of the screen. So actually, I've got to get that washer off. Put the bolt on there. The washer there. Let's get this tread lock ready. So this little beauty. Actually, let's just put it straight in the hole instead. Okay, we're in. You stay there. You come here. Now, this ideally is a two-person job. Um, I always end up doing this stuff on my own though, which is probably the reason I screw up half of them. Now let's get our T30. Let's force the screw into the washer. And let's get a start in the retaining spacer. Um, probably worth mentioning, which I probably haven't done before, is that. Um, there are spaces that go onto the racks onto the kind of standard rack now. get another one of these and just hold on there now again if we are going to need some thread lock on the retainer down there you go in there
you can tighten him in a moat with a wrench or something. Ugh, that thread lock doesn't taste very nice. Ugh. Now, let's get this guy in here. Blah. That's the. So I'm just going to push through there. Um, the other thing to note about this is you um, you do need to stretch the screen ever so slightly when you're fixing this. Looks like I've got a bite there too. Just keep it in a little bit to get it held. It's not jumping a tread. Okay, here we go again. Touch of tread lock. There you go. I'll get him back in here. Oh, on, right, on you go. Get over there. I think I might as well. Make sure I get that out into my pocket. What I might do now is just get the other retainer in. You just need to dab with this stuff, not too much. Give me a little spacer between this side. There you go. Now, this part of the screen, actually, you're going to need a bit of a, a bit of a stretch, right? So uh, it is a bit wider down at this end. So let's get one side in first. If you go on there, now you can see these bolts. Actually, I don't know if you can see here, these bolts actually have a bit of a collar on them. And those co that collar has to kind of sit in the hole. So that's that side on. Now you can see here how far away that hole is from the retainer, right? So all we've got to do now, put a lock on this one maybe. I should have done the other one, but now I can't be arsed. I'm going to have to just check uh, how tight they are. Oh, that's why I didn't do it, because I've got to get it through the bolt, or the washer, and the screen. And now there's dreadlock everywhere. Oh, Jesus Christ. Right then, so, uh, so I've got to get this over under a bit of tension. Screen tension, not viewer tension, or operator tension. Get it to bite. Bite you little beast. Please. There we go. Oh my god. Oh my god. We're in. Still going. Please tighten. Yes. Please tighten. Yes, and you. Yes, and it's tightened the retainer at the back nicely. As has that. And that, my friends, is magic dead fly on that. So now, even with clear, double clear, we can see. Well now, that's interesting. Uh, does it make the front of the bike look better or worse? It is, it kind of looks like a 
bulldog licking a nettle anyway. It's not the prettiest of bikes, but it is very functional and very rugged, much like myself. I am going to declare that a success. Uh, what's those silly stickers come off? Oh my god, I've started now. Right, so that's going to be a bit of WD 40 on a cloth. Get all the uh, excess adhesive off if there's a bit. But that will affect my OCD greatly. That has to come off. And this one will also have to come off. That I would, I would say is a success. I am quite happy with that. Uh, I'm not going to take it for a test ride because it's just manky out there at the moment. 19th of August. Just look at that. Anyway, there we go. So that's it. We're done, thankfully. Uh, next time you see this, I'll have it out on the road in anger. Uh, I'll let you know how it goes on. So hopefully that was helpful. I'll see you in the next video. Ciao.